Denis Papineau is on vacation in the Caribbean with his best friend Ralph. The two buddies are on a day trip to the countryside when Denis notices that his friend is starting to behave strangely. He was sitting in the passenger seat in front and he was kind of staring right in front of him. He was like dazed. Their destination is a freshwater lake in a secluded cave. Ralph gets out of the Jeep and we are walking down. He's the last one going down and he's doing it pretty slowly. You can see that he's shaking. He's not himself. But once they start swimming, Ralph seems to return to normal. The swimming in the caves is very nice. The water is just perfect. He gets out of the water, and he looks pretty good. He looks uh, refreshed, actually. The water was so cold. But Ralph is anything but refreshed. The last thing I remember is getting out of the water, and suddenly it all turns into darkness. All his arms are shaking. His, his eyes were, are wide open, and he's shaking a lot. I put my arm on him and uh, ask him, you know, what's wrong, what's wrong? But Ralph doesn't answer. At that point, I was really, uh, really worried. He can't talk, can't hear. He's out. Mentally, he's out. Concerned for his friend's health, Denis calls for an ambulance. But while they are waiting for the ambulance to arrive, the situation gets even worse. start to talk to him. Are you, can you hear me, Ralph? Can you hear me? I had no response at all, verbally, no response. As the minutes go, go by, I take his hand and ask him, if you can hear me, squeeze my hand. <laughs> and uh, at what point, he, he did squeeze my, my hand. So I knew he was hearing me. I didn't want him to pass out, so I kept talking to him right into his ear until the ambulance came. At the clinic, doctors put Ralph on oxygen and monitor his vital signs. Then the doctors turn their attention to Denis. The doctor is asking me, did he drink too much? Of course, I say no, he had one beer during the day. Look at him, he's an athlete. He can run for 10 miles. He's in perfect shape. While Denis is arguing with the doctors, Ralph starts to come around. I wake up, I'm surrounded by nurses and doctors holding me down. I didn't know where I was. At that point, he's saying to me, what happened, what happened, where am I, where am I? I'm saying to Ralph, you had a seizure of some kind. That's why you're here, but he doesn't quite believe me, actually. Eventually, Ralph calms down, and Denis relates the events of the last few hours. When Denis told me that I'd been out of it for a couple of hours or more, my thinking was, no way. What happened? I feel fine now. I just wanted to go back to the hotel. Of course, I'm relieved, but I'm still thinking if he really is out of uh, danger. The doctors order a battery of tests to establish the cause of the seizure. The results are shocking. The doctor told me there's something not right in the back of my head. They found out there's a cyst in the back of my brain. A cyst or lesion is a fluid-filled sac. It can be caused by an infection, a birth defect, or even a malignant tumor. Said that when I went back to the state, I should see someone right away. Dr. Mark Frost is a neurologist at Dent Neurological Institute in Buffalo. I had actually gotten a call from his physician that Ralph had had a seizure and it had a CAT scan that showed an abnormality and they were concerned about what it might have been. At this point, 
he's at significant risk of having a recurrent seizure, so the first priority was certainly treating the seizures to make sure he does not have another one. Ralph is put on anti-seizure medication. A second scan confirms the presence of the lesion, but exactly what it is remains a mystery. Dr. Frost begins to interrogate Ralph about his life and history. I asked Ralph about where he was born, any details about travel history, as well as any complications in his birth history. I mentioned that I go to Haiti on a regular basis once a year. I mean, that's where I'm originally from. This is the clue that Dr. Frost has been looking for. The fact that he was born in Haiti and frequently traveled back there is indicative that this may be a parasite. Almost a third of all epileptic seizures are caused by one parasite. And for those living in or frequently traveling to developing countries, the number is even higher. Could this parasite be living in Ralph's brain? A blood test confirms that Ralph is harboring a pork tapeworm in his brain. I mean, I have a seizure now. I have a worm in my brain. I mean, after all, it's my brain. I mean, gee. In most cases, a human gets this parasite by eating contaminated pork. But a human can also get this parasite by coming into contact with infected human feces. This can occur if food is washed in contaminated water or is prepared in unsanitary conditions. This may be what happened to Ralph. The eggs hatched into larvae in Ralph's stomach burrowed through his intestinal wall and traveled in the blood to his brain, where they formed a cyst. As the cyst expands, it puts pressure on the brain, causing seizures. To make matters worse, the parasite is extremely difficult to kill without also killing the host. The pork tapeworm has a brilliant defense mechanism that allows it to totally sidestep the immune system of its host. The insisted larvae secrete a chemical that binds to the body's immune cells, preventing them from penetrating the cyst. But if the cyst is killed, it stops secreting the defensive chemical, and the body's immune system launches a massive assault on the dead parasite. This immune response causes the brain to swell, resulting in a deadly condition known as encephalitis. Ralph is referred to infectious disease specialist Dr. Richard Lee. Encephalitis is one of those situations where patients can become comatose, where they can become demented or they can become disoriented. It's a potentially fatal complication. Dr. Lee faces a difficult choice. There were questions that he had uh, and that I had about whether we should treat him with an, a drug to kill the parasite. If Dr. Lee does use drugs to kill the parasitic cyst, he risks triggering an immune response that could also kill Ralph. But if he just leaves the cyst in the brain, Ralph could have another seizure and die. I became very concerned that I may have to live with this forever. Together, they weigh the options. Since there is only one cyst, they decide not to use drugs. Instead, they leave the parasite in his brain where it will eventually die. What I was telling him is the single lesion would gradually get smaller and die. By allowing the cyst to die naturally, Dr. Lee hopes they can avoid a massive immune reaction. Dr. Lee recommends that I continue to take the anti-seizure medicine and monitor the situation. Ralph now goes for regular MRI scans every six months and the cyst has continued to get steadily smaller.